and when I drove in, there was um, they showed me into this room when this guy came in with his agent and, and it was Mino Raiola and uh, Mario Balotelli. And it was a time when he had the fight with Mancini on the training ground and he was banned from the training facility. And they said, well, we need your help for two weeks before he made that move to from Man City to AC Milan. And I knew from that day on, I knew that there was, uh, was legs in this. I'm here with Wayne Richardson of Richardson Sport, strength conditioning coach. How are you doing, Wayne? I'm all right, thank you. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. If we strip it right back, if you had to explain to other people, what is what is it you do? Where do you want me to start? <laughs> um, I um, I'm a, a fitness coach. I'm now a performance director of my own company, um, Richardson Sport, and we've been established since uh, uh, tw June 2010. Mainly dealing with fitness, uh, conditioning, uh, sports science. What to say performance analysis, uh, testing, and now obviously the 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 the, the position has kind of like gone fast where we spend more of our time counselling players. You end up being a, a mentor, you end up being a father, you end up being you know a bigger brother. You know, so you you know not only dealing with that, you're dealing with not just the kind of the science and the fitness behind it. You're now dealing with kind of like being a, a family man, you know, and someone that you can talk to. You know, and, and it's only when things happen with, with footballers and athletes where they need support, where you can sit down and talk to them at, le you know, at a level. You find out that the job is not just nine to five. You find, you find out this is a 24-7 job. So you're saying that like, players don't have equipment. Is that normal? They shocked you? And is it harder for you to train them when they haven't got equipment, especially over, over the internet? With the academy players, you can improvise a lot more. You, know, you can do so much more with them. You know, um, I think when you then go up like, more championship. Uh, or Premier League, it all depends on where they live. So, you know, some players have like big gardens, they have big gardens bigger than pitches. And you have some players that live in apartment blocks, you know, the first year pro or the second year pro who lives in an apartment block, you know, his kind of bachelor pads, you know, got his nice ride, got his, you know, his, uh, his nice little pad and everything like that. And it's like, oh, right, you know what, Wayne, uh, there's a bit of a problem. I need a, I need a what bike or I need to order some resistance bands. You're having to think for the player. And this is what they do. This is what your club has sent you. This is the program. What do I do here? You know, and what's this, uh, you know, the Strava run, you know, and trying to set up GPS and everything like that. But now where they're beginning to stream into the players' homes, you know, and, and then do that. But obviously because of limited resources, you're then having to kind of educate the players on the, the resources that they need to, to do that job while this, this is going on. And you're being very modest. You've trained some big names, haven't you? Can you reel off a couple that you've, that you've trained? The first one, obviously, was uh, Mario Balotelli. And um, we have, uh, you know, Igalo, uh, Jesse Lingard, uh, Shea Ojo. Um, I'm working, currently working with a player called Ben Berriton from Nottingham, you know, he came from Nottingham Forest. He's now at Blackburn. Um, there's a young player who's now gone to Norwich, a guy called Dan Anstead, who was at Rochdale. When, when we initially first started this, um, I, I got a call from um, a friend of mine. So then he said to me, listen, um, I've got an address for you. There's this player. He wants to see you with his agent. He needs help. I'm not going to tell you who it is. When I got there, there was uh, TV cameras. There was everyone there. There was Sky Sports News with BBC, Radio 5 Live, Sport, or everybody, every man and his dog was there. And when I drove in, there was, um, they showed me into this room when this guy came in with his agent. And I thought and it was Mino Raiola and uh, Mario Balotelli. And it was a time when he had the fight with Mancini on the training ground and he was banned from the training facility. And they said, well, we need your help for two weeks before he made that move to from Man City to AC Milan. And I knew from that day on, I knew that there was, um, there was legs in this. And then from since then, I've always been involved with agents and, and clubs and trying to, you know, have a good you know, relationship between the club and, you know, the, the sports science support and stuff as well. So we try not to undermine their kind of like... Uh, their position and stuff as well. I try and work with them and work with the club. So that was my first um, kind of like big shot into kind of like working with, uh, you know, Premier League or, you know, like championship players. Recently, saw lots of pictures and Agalo himself was putting out pictures of you training him. How did that come about? And your business must have gone crazy after that. It went worldwide. It was mental because leading up to deadline day, and obviously this year it was on Friday, and the deal was uh, concluded. At like 10.59, we've seen it and, you know, there's, there's book roll and obviously social media that, you know, who's this, this guy, this has-been that's playing in the, in the, you know, in the, in the, the Chinese league and all that kind of stuff. And why, you know, you get a player like this, I think you have to 
even though it was just all, it was just all negativity. And then I got a call from the uh, the agent, basically saying to me, um, um, two weeks we want you to set up a, a training camp. And he'd be in with you on Monday, and Monday afternoon he came. On average, he, I mean, so he was doing probably like three sessions a day, you know, in with us. Um, one was obviously, you know, um, flexibility and mobility session. The other one was obviously a conditioning session. And in the evening, you would do a ball session as well. And United, to be fair to United, they were, they were, you know, when they realised who he was working with through, through the agent and stuff as well and, and what he was doing, because at the time they were in, they were in Marbella. And the thing was, everyone was then turning around saying, why would you let someone who's just come from China, it doesn't matter where it was, the distance between where he was and where Wuha was is like, is like nine hours. But the only thing that the, the general public see is like, you're from China, you've got coronavirus, that's it. When United then turned around and said, well, you know, the, the communications um, manager turned around and she got in contact with my, 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 my manager, who's my, my part. And we sat down and went through all and I was in, in, in this meeting with United in Marbella, the CEO of GB Taekwondo, the uh, head of communications at GB Taekwondo, and I'm in this big meeting saying, well, what are we going to do about it? I'm thinking, wow, you know, I've only brought this guy into train. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm, you know, these TV cameras, they, they, they had, they had um, the press were uh, disguised as uh, UPS drivers, you know, coming in, there was, there was uh, kids who were paying in to play football, but were sent in by the press taking pictures and, they were posting them on Twitter when you arrived and things like that. I've never, I've never ever experienced anything like it. But as for a player, for him, he was um, he was fantastic. He was such an athlete. His attitude from dot one, you know, he was on time. You know, he, his training, his mental state of mind, how you, you know, all of that. You you wouldn't have thought that this guy was coming in, and, and he knew that he had basically the pressure on his on his shoulders. You know, he's like you're wearing the weight of Man United on your on your on your, on your back. And I was, I, I, listen, I got, I got emotional when, you know, when he started scoring and all of that happened. And then it was then, it then just blew up. And then I had all, everybody wanted to speak to me and everyone wanted me to do press release and talk to them and everything. I said, look, you know, the agent has basically said to us, once he starts scoring, then we'll sit down and we'll talk to everybody. But at this moment in time, we're not doing any interviews. So my partner was declining interviews left, right and centre and saying, no, we're not doing anything because we want the guy to settle in. We want him to feel you know comfortable we don't want to start doing that and, I, and it's not my place to say but from a performance point of view you know you know where i had my assistant andy sutcliffe um gary owen who's a performance analysis who's worked at a few clubs but was with gb taekwondo and um we had the guy from united who was one of the fitness coaches athletic development coaches called uh, charlie owen he was really good and we were really he was really good in terms of like we sent the information across to united they realized what we were doing he liked what we were doing. We were talking about like what he was lifting, what he was training. So we were able to send over the GPS results and say about the sessions that he was doing and how much recovery time he was doing as well and massages and ice baths and everything like that as well. And then it became, Alex, like a very much like a smooth transition then because he was able to then just go in and they didn't have him to, not having to work with him for like a month or two months to get him, you know, up to peak fitness. We already had done that for the best part of three weeks, but he was coming off back from two weeks of obviously doing a pre-season with, um, with his team. So he was already in pre-season training. So we were able to then give him about two to three weeks before then we, he was in that transition of moving in United. So yeah, it was, it was good. That's the, the nice side of it. The worst side of it is when you then see academy players on a day-to-day -day basis getting released. You know, players that the, the dreams have been shattered because obviously it's been what they've been told in there as well. And we've had to pick so many players up from that out, you know, who parents are ringing you up one to two o'clock in the morning and must spot himself in the bedroom can you help us we've been giving your number and you feel like you have a duty of doing that you know that bit is you get a little bit and all the stars and everything it is a nice bit you know you get the, the great kind of kudos from that but i'm only doing my job I, I like to do my job and i like to just you know don't like all the limelight and stuff as well do my job do whatever it's at, it's expected of me and at, at the end of the day that's that's how it works and other than that i've other things that I need to do in terms of like helping the players in the future. And it's the most important thing. Well, on physical performance, so mm -hmm. players are, are in now and they're saying at the moment when we're filming this, they want to have the season done by the end of June. How long would players need now to get up to match fitness? 
So you're going to find out that the adaptations with players is going to be quite difficult. Players, some players are going to be doing stuff. Some players, are, you know, are not going to be able to have the facilities at their homes at this moment in time. And what you're going to be talking about is about a bit of a mini pre-season here. You know what I mean? You're going to be talking about probably about anything between three to four weeks before the season is then kind of like continued. And that is the issue that you have because what we're then looking at is, you know, the strains, the issues, the problems that they have, you know what I mean, of then doing high intensity work, do you know what I mean, but in small confined spaces. And remember, what players like routine. They like routine. They like going, you know, they come in, they've got to have an end game at the end of it as well. They know for a fact that when they come in, they, they are training and they're playing at the weekend or they're playing midweek, you know, whether that's European games, whether that's Champions League games, whether that's FA Cup games or it's Premier League games. They know that there's a, there's a but there's no kind of, end game with this we don't know we're playing a bit of a guessing game but when they then go back you're talking probably anything between three to four weeks before they then get back up to mainstream fitness and that's from a club point of view they may be fitting you know within their own you know like ticking over but is it match fitness is it you know you know that's the that's the thing that we've got to you know they've not played any games and when they do hopefully you know we'll see if, they, if it's going to be being closed door so it's good it's going to be a bit of a tough one for them that's been perfect. I've really enjoyed chatting to you and thank you for your time. Um, obviously, as much as I do, you want football back as well. Everyone misses it, but uh, I'm sure we'll check in when the season gets going anyway. Definitely. You know what I mean? It's my pleasure and um, I'm glad that I can help you. Know, and thank you for your time. Much appreciated.